Hey, it's Kate for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to make a cinched bag on your Addy knitting machine. So let's get started. So here I have the Addy King. You could do this on the Addy Pro for a much smaller bag, but I'm doing it on the Addy King. I want to be in circular knitting mode, and I'm going to be making this out of two strands of worsted weight yarn. Now this is Caron Simply Soft, which is um, a rather thin worsted weight yarn. It's on the thinner side, but you could probably use um, two thicker worsteds together or just one really thick worsted. But I'm using two strands of this lightweight worsted Caron Simply Soft yarn. So I'm in circular knitting mode. I'm going to bring up the first black needle and I'm going to cast on all the way around by hooking the yarn in the first black needle, skipping the second one, so the yarn's going behind the second one, in front of the next, behind the next, in front of the next, behind the next, etc., etc., all the way around. And I'm going to be treating these two strands of yarn as though they were one throughout the whole project. Just make sure you don't cast on too tightly or the yarn will try to split on the next few rounds. Now I'm not going to push the yarn down into this little hole. I want it to, to flow more freely. I'm going to close the yarn guide and clear my row counter. And basically all we're knitting here is a tube. So you can decide how long you want your tube. Um, I'm thinking right now I'm going to do about 8 to 10 inches, but that could change, you know. It, I can just measure it on the machine and decide if I think it's long enough or not. So I'm going to start knitting in the round in circular knitting mode and just keep knitting until I like the length of my tube thus far. Alright, so I have knit 45 rows and I just want to mention that when you go to measure the length of your tube on your Addy you want to um, stretch lengthwise the knitting you already have. You're going to measure from the needle down here to the edge of your knitting. Now I have about 10 inches according to the ruler, but when you take this off the machine, it's actually going to be a little bit longer than that because it's stretched so far widthwise that it shrinks in length towards the top inch or two. So it's probably going to be closer to um, 10 and a half, 11 inches, but that's, I, I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. So now we're going to make a little row of intentional holes through which we may feed our drawstring later. Now, as I got um, it to, through the knitting, I decided to put the yarn through this hole in the yarn guide and just feed it through like this. Because this is doubled, um, the machine has a slightly harder time going through it. And yes, I did get quite a few tucked stitches, but that's okay. You can fix a tucked stitch. I have a whole video on how to fix a tucked stitch. And just because a yarn or a combination of yarns gives you tucked stitches doesn't mean you can't use that yarn. You can still use the yarn and just make sure you fix the tucked stitches as you go. So because the Addy King has 46 needles on it, and 46 is a prime number, meaning it cannot be divided by anything except 1 and 46, and we need to divide that 46 into um, intervals where we're going to place our intentional holes. So we're just going to pretend it has 45 needles and put a hole on every fifth stitch, and then... Um, the last one will have uh, six, it will be on the sixth stitch instead of the fifth because it, the, the number of needles does not fit. And another thing that might happen when you're using doubled yarn is like this right here, where the machine split the yarn because it's having a hard time with the thickness of it. But that's also just as easy to fix as a, fix as a tucked stitch. And as soon as I get around to that one, I will fix that as well. So here's my first needle. I'm going to knit one, two, three, this is going to be four, 
and as the fifth one comes up, I just want it to come up, I don't want it to do anything else, I'm going to take the stitch off of that needle with a loom pick and gently stretch it out. And I'm going to bring it back just a touch, just enough to try to stretch that stitch over the fourth. So that's going to decrease one stitch and leave the fifth needle empty, which is what we want. And that will be one of our intentional holes. So that's the fifth. I'm going to knit one, two, three, four, five. This fifth needle right here is going to be the next one. So here's my hole. One, two, three, four. And as that fifth one comes up, I'm going to take it off the needle, stretch the stitch, back the machine up just enough to try to get it over gently without forcing it and breaking your needles over the fourth needle. And then you bring it back up and keep going. Now, I also want to note that as you do this, the, um, the third needle or I should say the second, because here was our last intentional hole. This is one, two, three, four, that's the fifth. So it's actually the second needle of every um, set is going to um, pop up. I'll show you how that, how that happens in just a second. We're going to knit one, two, three, four. As the fifth one comes up, we want to take the stitch off of that needle, stretch it out, and back up the machine just a little bit so we can stretch the stitch over the top of the fourth needle. And as you can see, Sometimes, it didn't happen this time, but sometimes the, the needle will have already knit, the second needle, and it'll go to pop back up like that. So then when it goes back down, it's just going to have the needle with the stitch in it hooked, and it won't have this extra um, loop of yarn that's actually the previous row on around these red tabs, red pegs. So that's five. I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around, making a hole on every fifth needle until I get to the last six needles. Alright, so I've made it all the way back around to my black needle and um, I mentioned that the that one of these sets of stitches would have to be six instead of five and mine just worked out that my uh, last hole that was still, you know, every fifth um, is the last stitch before the last white needle. So the, the set of stitches that has six is one, two, three, four, five, six, and here's the hole. So this right here is my set with six. This is my um, last set with five. You can do it that way, or you can, like this was my last hole, you can just do one, two, three, four, five, and then put the hole on this needle. It's up to you, whatever, whatever ends up working out for you better. But I'm just going to knit a few more rows to make about another inch or so of knitted fabric past the row of holes. Alright, so I'm going to stop about there. I have approximately four or five rows after my row of holes. And now we're going to finish this up. You're going to need a rather long piece of waist yarn. I just grabbed one that was handy, and this one is not super long, but it'll be enough. And what we're gonna do is take the yarn out of the yarn guide, bring it behind, and make sure we sink the last white needle. And then we're just going to pick up all the stitches all the way around on this piece of waist yarn with a yarn needle. And even though my waist yarn wasn't super, super long, it was still long enough to hold all the stitches. So now we're going to finish this up. And as you can see, when you use two different colored strands of yarn together, 
sometimes you end up getting random um, pooling, color pooling, in the sense that all that makes the difference between the fabric that appears green and the fabric that appears purple is that the the two strands of yarn were held together in a way that the purple was on the front of the fabric and the green was on the back or the green was on the front and the purple was on the back but I don't really care about this this is kind of a I don't know kind of speckled look in in sections there's a few stripes and that can be kind of cool so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this top edge and I'm going to use the yarn that's coming off where I did not cut it or anything. It's still coming from both of the balls. And I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm going to bind off this top edge with a crochet hook. And if you don't know how to do this, you can go and watch my how to bind off with a crochet hook video. All right, so I'm almost back around to the end. This is my last stitch. And I'm going to bind that one off like so. I'm going to take my waist yarn and pull on it until it comes out because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to cut the yarn. Now I'm going to pull on my hook until the yarn comes out just like I did in the um, video showing how to bind off with a crochet hook. And I'm going to close up the little gap around this edge with my yarn needle. All right, now I'm just going to tie off this yarn and weave in my tail. All right, so now to finish off the bottom edge, this edge is gonna be our drawstring edge. To finish up this edge on the bottom, I'm going to take that starting tail that we started our cast on with and I'm going to pull on it. All right, now mine, um, when I had cast on, it must have split through the yarn, so I'm going to have to pull out most of this yarn. I've cut before the split and I'm just going to thread this into my yarn needle. And I'm just going to pick up all the stitches all the way around, just like they had been on my cast on. And this yarn is still going to be long enough to make it through all my stitches and tie off. All right, so I've all, got it all the way around, all the stitches on this piece of yarn that was my cast on. And I'm just gonna pull and pull and pull on that until I can close that hole up as small as I can get it. And that's about as small as I can get it. So I'm going to pick up a strand of yarn here, wrap my yarn around the needle and tie off. And then I'm going to take that to the inside so I can weave in the tail. All right, now the only thing left is the drawstring. So to make the drawstring, you're going to take your doubled yarn and your crochet hook and we're just gonna make a crocheted chain. That's long enough to go through all the holes in the drawstring with quite a few inches extra on the ends to tie it with. And if you don't know how long you're gonna need it to be, you can just start feeding it through the holes. You're gonna go in one hole, up through the next, down through one hole, up through the next, etc., etc. And you're going to need enough length to go all the way around your bag plus extra so that you have enough extra to tie it together with. So I'm going to make mine about twice as long as I had it. So once you've got enough length, you can just cut the yarn, tie off your chain, and thread it through the rest of the way. And you will have an extra hole here, but you don't actually have to have it threaded through that hole because that's where you're going to tie it. So if this is approximately the front of your bag, then you can tie it here. I'm going to actually take the ends of that chain and cut off the extra yarn just to leave about an inch. Because we don't want it to, to fray as it's used and washed, etc. 
And when you want to close it, you can just pull on those drawstrings, tie them together, like so. And if you don't want to have an extra hole when you go to thread your um, drawstring through, then you can use a different number of sets of stitches to uh, have in between your intentional holes. That's just what I chose to do. You can choose whatever number that you want that um, fits into the 46 stitches on your machine. And now that our bag is finished, you can see why I chose to use doubled worsted weight yarn, because if you used a single strand of a thinner worsted weight yarn, then you'd be able to see through the bag and see what's inside, and um, small items could probably fall out the bottom. Now, there is a small hole at the bottom here because it's so thick when you have to cinch it shut, but chances are you're not going to be carrying super small items in a bag like this without having a little pouch or something for them. These bags are really cute and I think they're a great option for gift bags because not only does the recipient of the gift get to keep the gift, but they also get to keep the bag that it came in and in that sense it's eco-friendly because you get to keep and reuse the bag instead of throwing it away. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this bag, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.